This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening. I'd like to call the April 12, 2018 meeting of the North Board of North Haven Board of Ed to order at 640. Um, Board of Ed has had an opportunity and other to look at the agenda. Our first item is our consent agenda, which was the meeting minutes of 2018. The resignation of Ms. Donna Doyle, our special ed teacher at North Haven High School. Resident, uh, resignation of Shoba Kablash, a special ed teacher at Ridge Road. Resignation of Melissa Barra, our speech language pathologist in, uh, for Green Acre for the early childhood program. And the appointment of Jeff Knuth as a head coach of the North Haven High School girls soccer team. May I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second? Second. Is there any discussion on meeting minutes or any other comments? Okay, for those that are resigning, we wish them well. I sat on that committee um, with Mr. Knuth was hired, and I think we have a great girls um, soccer soccer coach. It was a nice um, committee as we had uh, students involved with it, too. Very nice. Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Motion passes. Wanted to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, discussion, uh, Board of Ed student uh, rep reports. Who wants to go first? Hi. Right. So, the junior class is hosting a movie night in two weeks. Tickets are five dollars each, and we are showing the Incredibles. Attendance is predicted to be huge because many students voted for this movie to be played. So you um, expect an incredible audience? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Incredibles. Yeah. Um, also, the dodgeball tournament is scheduled for some time at the end of this year. And that's going to be between who? Um, just the students. Just the students? Staff can participate too, if they want. Okay. <laughs> and the Chipotle fundraiser is also coming up too. Um, National Honor Society application <coughs> has also begun for juniors. And induction in May for those accepted. The Interact Club is also helping out with the Kids for Kids event next weekend, 21st and 22nd. And all juniors will <coughs> be taking SATs on April 24th, right after spring break. Okay, great, thanks. Um, the senior class is running a clothing fundraiser. Uh, we've done it like through um, fan cloth before, but now it's an online source. Um, like anyone in North Haven could get the URL, and it's North Haven. Um, just it just has like an NH logo on it, so. It applies to anyone in the town. If anyone is interested, you can uh, support the senior class. We get like 10% of um, what you spend on it, and it's delivered right to your house. So, if you're uh, if you're interested in some uh, apparel, that would be great. Um, can I make a suggestion if it's not done already? Yeah. Um, uh, they should probably put it on their website or a Facebook, maybe <coughs> a Facebook page if they have one. It might be on the high school uh, website. I'm okay. not sure, but. Um, I will look into that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly when it closes, but um, it's open to the officers to close whenever, and then we get the funds, and that's um, how it works. That's actually a really interesting fundraiser. I like the idea. Um, and prom committee met today and is working on determining the price of prom tickets and senior picnic tickets. Um, so it's looking to be about eighty dollars for prom, which is like ten dollars less than last year, which is nice. And hopefully. Um, either like 15 for the picnic or nothing. So, well, we'll see about that. Um, and just to go off of that prom, if uh, we don't know, is at Anthony's Ocean View on Friday, May 18th this year. So looking forward to that. It'll be after, I think, the May meeting though. So um, we'll look to that. And then the Ben Choir trip uh, was this past weekend. Um, I believe they all got superiors except for like a handful of groups and they still did very well. So overall successful Virginia Beach trip. Um, the high school sports started up uh, late March and most teams are into their seasons, have had a couple games. And quarter three grades are closing this week right before April break. So. Thank you. Um, just for myself, just a couple of things um, for the board. 
You got uh, invitations to the National Honor Society inductee in our, in our mailbox the other day. I don't have the date of that. And I also don't have the date of Art Beat. I know we, we should we be getting something. Yeah, we haven't gotten anything okay. yet from them. So Art Beat should be coming to, so that's one of my, one of my favorites. Um, What's the, the Honor Society was the language, right? The word language. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Word language. The 25th. 25th. Right. Okay. Um, May 3rd. I was going to say May 3rd. Okay, and RB is scheduled for May 3rd, which is before our next meeting. Uh, so we can, should all try and get a chance to go over there. Um, and I uh, had the opportunity to go to the middle school and see uh, Little Mermaid. It was fantastic. I'm always amazed by the talent of our students and the t teacher volunteers who put that together. It was an amazing program. It was the first time I saw a play at the new middle school, at school and it, it, was, it, was very, it was very nice. Oh, it was Mrs. Monks last year directing yeah. the play? Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, so I'd like to thank her for all her hard work yes. she's done. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was 14 years, I think, that she's done it. They so, announced okay. that on Saturday. Right, right. right. Did they, this, yeah. This will be her last one. Oh, was okay. her last one. Thank you for showing that Jackie and I are in a book club together, so I want to get a chance. I'll make sure I know that when I'm there. Maybe she'll really read the books now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll start going to more <laughs> of the meetings. <laughs> um... Okay. Is there any unfinished business that we need to discuss right now that may not come into our programs? Okay. Any new business anyone wants to bring up? Um, actually, I'm only going to add this as new business because uh, I don't know if the person is here who wants to talk about it and I want to allow them to talk about it. I saw it on the New York Haven community page that someone was looking to talk to the Board of Ed about putting in a before school um, child care. It's something that we looked at before. Oh, it was you? Okay. Yeah. So um, I did see that and I, I didn't know who was here, if you were here or not, but um, part of the, with the Board of Ed, you have to have it on your agenda or have talked about it to have public comment. Mm -hmm. So when we have public comment, please, please come and talk about it. Okay, you're welcome. Um, okay, Dot Aces. Sure. Dot, we're glad you're hobbling along. Yeah, mm -hmm. cobbling is a word for it. Mm -hmm. um, today, uh, the meeting started with the uh, Wintergreen um, uh, Magnet School, had second graders come, and they were demonstrating, um, well, they came with their iPads, and they, they were uh, demonstrating um, codes with Osmo, which is a coding program. It's real cute. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand a word they said. <laughs> <laughs> they were cute, and it was, and, and they were, you know, the only thing I asked is, look, are you having fun doing this? And, and the little girl said, oh, yes. You yeah, know, really so, cool. And yeah. they were all smiles. Um, even though um, ACES always sets the, their um, tuition rates in November, we passed our budget and for all the schools, and they're overall having a 1.95% increase. And they um, also, we voted to uh, raise the substitute pay to $90 a day. And for the special ed teachers who are working in the special ed schools, they're now going to be raised to $110 a day. Recognizing that quality substitute teachers mm -hmm. are hard to find. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then they um, passed out the... Uh, form for the ACES Summer Academy, which is just going to be in Woodbridge this year, uh, not East Haven, Woodbridge, and that is recapturing of lost credit. Those for the kids in high school. <coughs> so that's it. Thank you. Uh, Wes, curriculum instruction planning. We did not meet. I volunteered to push on through the driving <laughs> wind and snow and rain and, and walk from my house, but they decided to cancel. Like we did, you know, so we had to we had to walk in that weather. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything on there that meeting agenda that we need to discuss or? No, nope, we moved it to our um, May agenda. We couldn't fit it in with the break next week. Okay, so. no problem. Finance and operations. Finance and operations met earlier this evening. Uh, in your packet, you have your financial statement through uh, March 31st. Now we're trending where reimbursements are coming in. Uh, the deficit we're running still is with the benefits um, as numbers, and we start to come out to the year. Uh, we're just watching the numbers closely, and we'll see how things wind up. Okay, thank you. 
something? We haven't met yet since the last meeting. We hope to meet on Monday. Not exactly sure. We're trying to see if there's going to be a quorum, especially with spring break and everything. So okay. we haven't met yet. At North Haven Education Foundation, um, Joe couldn't be here tonight, and he did email me his comments, and I unfortunately didn't see them to recently and I left my cell phone in Dr. Cronin's office. I think the most important part was because I read them, you said about the spelling bee. Yeah, uh, and we know for the spelling bee, I know we have our team together, right? Yep. Did you guys pick out your costumes yet? We sure did. Okay, and that is April 26th. <coughs> Six. Six. And they are looking if we anyone knows of any additional sponsors or teams. No, they don't need sponsors. No sponsors, They've got teams. a number of sponsors, yeah, but they would like more teams. Um, so, anybody from the audience? I can pull a couple of teams right now. <laughs> no. Everyone kind of. No. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're looking for more teams. For that, um, I will tell you guys. Um, my, I have a family member who sponsors the board of ed, and he has asked us to get past the fourth round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, tell him to hold his breath. <laughs> <laughs> Um, policy, the new committee has not met yet. We are going to be putting together some timing for that to go through. We're really waiting for this whole budget process to be through, and we will um, get together and sit down on, on what policies need to be updated, what ones need to be amended, what needs to be added. PTA Council, Amanda? Um, I wasn't able to make the latest PTA Council meeting, uh, but there was uh, a number of items that were discussed. Um, the basketball game, the district basketball game, had a really good turnout. And this past weekend, the color run happened, and that also had an excellent turnout. It looked like a lot of fun. Um, the St. Baldrick's numbers aren't final yet, but they are very significant on the Clintonville side. They're, there's over $20,000 that was raised for <coughs> child care there, which is wow. excellent. And um, still discussing screenagers uh, being screened, which would be great. And um, fundraising for the playground at Ridge Road is going well. Okay, and that um, playground also got some funds from the Quinnipiac money, is that correct? Did yes. I see yes. that? Yes, it did. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, then may I have a motion to approve the standing committee reports? Right. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. So now we'll go to staff communications. Dr. Cronin? Okay. Um, first of all, um, one of our responsibilities in April is to set the graduation date. And um, this year, as you probably know, we've had a total of eight snow days. So that's moved our calendar from June 12th to J Friday, June 22nd is the last day of school. Now, um, typically graduation is scheduled at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on that last day. <coughs> Friday being the last day this year presents a bit of a challenge, and I'll explain why in a minute. And you, some of you may remember that it was a problem a couple of years back as well. Um, so before I get to that, though, by statute, school districts are um, required to be in session 180 days. North Haven is in schedule 181 days. Um, the organizers um, of Project Graduation are concerned about having the event on a Friday evening as opposed to a Thursday evening. They're concerned about um, attendance. Um, if, if we think of Friday as a start of a weekend, they're concerned that students may choose to do some other things as opposed to come to graduate, uh, project graduation. Um, this happened a couple of years ago when we were going to Quasipod. Now that we're going to... Um, the only game in town? The only game in town. Um, but um, <coughs> it, it seemed to work out well when we, we bumped the uh, last day for seniors to the Thursday and held graduation on the 21st. And so... Um, with your blessing, that's what we'd like to do this year. Would the, would the whole last day of school be June 21st? No, no, just no, for no. the high school. Yeah, and then and um, as always, I mean, the seniors are welcome to come back um, on <laughs> Friday after the ceremony, but um, they. 
but they have met the required the time. Absolutely. So Absolutely. How does that impact eighth grade promotion? Uh, that will probably be, uh, typically that's on the last day. Mm -hmm. That will probably be on the last day. Mm -hmm. The only reason I'm hedging is that um, I don't know with setup mm -hmm. because they use some of the high school setup. Right, right. So um, I'll just have to I'll clarify that. But I think it should be Friday. So um, uh, June uh, 21st it is, the first day of summer. All right, and uh, the other thing is that each year I, I ask you if um, you will agree to um, my changing the last three days of school to shorten days. So this year it would be June 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, and we would follow our shortened day schedule. It just gets to be, and particularly now that we're going mm -hmm. so late in June, it gets very warm in buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, you have to vote on that? No, I don't think so. It is a, um, it's, okay. it's administrative, but it's, I just don't want to do it without your being aware of it. Okay. Any questions about either the graduation dates or? So the 621 is still the same 4 o'clock? 621 is at 4 o'clock. Okay. Yep. In your packets I sent you, um, that we sent out last week, there was information about fee schedules. Because one of the things that you asked me to do at the end of, um, after our conversation, was to go back and look at particularly our fees for non-North Haven groups. And um, I did that. Now, there is a board policy that spells all of that out. Um, it's board policy 3515A. Um, and it has different rates for each group. So in your, I, in your packets, I included some information concerning our fees, and I just think it's always interesting to look at how we are do, what we are doing in comparison to other districts. Now, there's no standard in terms of how much you charge. Um, and clearly, when you look at the, uh, the, um, the variety, that, we know that's the case. Um, now, you need to know that we are currently only charging for custodial overtime. <coughs> so even those prices there that we have for the use of um, classrooms or auditoriums, we're really just charging for uh, custodial overtime. We've had conversations about this in the past. We've never gotten to a, a final decision. Um, the other thing that I just want to remind you of is currently the fees collected for the use of the facilities are paid to the town. So um, while there are revenue tr actually um, from the Board of Education from our side, um, and we're looking into um, why that is and if that can't be changed. I don't know if it's because uh, through town charter, um, so we're going to work on that. Um, but that is, now what I, what I gave you in your packet is um, an outline of <coughs> for-profit, um, non-community uh, groups. And that's for um, each town that, um, that I have hit, listed at the head there. So, um, I mean, it's, it was interesting to look at. Yeah, I've got it right here. Um, so if you take something like <clears throat> uh, uh, a high school, let's, let's take the high school auditorium. Um, in Madison, and their rates are for four hours, it is $750, and then they tack on from there. Uh, in Milford, it's $880. Um, in Shelton, it's $4,000 to rent Jeez. the high school. But it must be quite a an auditorium. Painted, right? they only have to rent it once a year. I don't think <laughs> I don't think that they really want anybody to rent it. I guess. That would be my guess. And in North Haven, mm -hmm. ours is five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So and then it just I center. just pulled out the major areas. That, um, Milford, um, interestingly enough, really does not rent out any other space other than high school. They don't rent out any of their middle school space or any of their elementary space. Mm -hmm. Are these the, uh, just for clarification, and I should know this, but I don't, are these the ones that are currently in place or are these proposed 
No, these are the ones that are currently these in place. Are the ones that are based, based on our policy, yeah. Do we have numbers around the demand for use of school facilities? Do we know how often they're being rented? They don't rent them many times in Shelton. I guess I would <laughs> 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 yeah. it's cost they, uh, The buildings are used a great deal. Now, um, uh, basketball season, uh, almost every building. Mm -hmm. um, catechism. Almost every day. Yep. Yes, catechism yeah. for St. Barnabas. Um, so they're used, um, they're used pretty regularly. Uh, kids for kids. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a number of events at the middle, at the high school in particular. Maybe the people from Shelton come to our auditorium. <laughs> they may. Uh, it, who knows? We can advertise in Shelton. <laughs> We do look significantly lower yeah. than our peers on most <coughs> items. We're like 70 to 80 percent lower, actually, mm -hmm. on most of these mm -hmm. items. And mm -hmm. you said we're not charging in most cases. We're only charging for custodial? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that um, we really, um, I wanted you to have the information. We need, we'll have to ultimately make a decision going forward about what we're going to do with this. Um, we just started charging basketball for custodial overtime uh, for the past year. Prior to that, um, groups have paid nothing. So I understand ab about like youth leagues. I don't know that I really, I wanna kinda keep this separate from them, mm -hmm. but for for-profit organizations, what would it take to enforce the policies that we have on the books? I would say that it would just take a, a vote of the board to... But, but we Actually, you've already, already voted, voted, voted on the, the policy, policy, so it's already I think in the place. whole thing is that it's what we need to do with the people who are for profit that that do rent our buildings. I mean, I think I saw a couple of somebody who rents for a couple of high school um, <coughs> teaching that, that they pay some, something yes, to driving us. Yes, driving school. The driving school pays pays us and a few others. So I just think that what we need to do is have Tina, have someone in her group put together a letter, get it approved by Dr. Cronin, and we just have it that whenever anyone asks to use our space, we send out a bill. Okay, so that would be for uh, everybody who, if you recall in our policy, there are categories. Mm -hmm. So it would be every, we, we've just decided on category four right now. You're right, because right? this is just commercial and for profit right. organizations. Right, and that's, um, that's category four, category four, yep. And I do believe, and am I correct? And then the nonprofit ones, I just want to reiterate that, we're just charging for the custodial services. Right now, we are just charging for the right. custodial services. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. So I think that's that's how it has to get implemented. Tina <coughs> has to come from your finance group, from your group. <coughs> we'll put something together, work together on, on a letter and let people know we're not going to go back and charge people. Right. But, but going forward. forward. But going forward. Okay. What do and you think the timetable on, on getting that together would be? I think with the budget season happening right now right. and things happening, I'm going to ask her to have it done for June. Let's work on that for June, and then we can get things off starting through June through the summer. Is that fair, to, fair enough time mm -hmm. after budget? And sure. we can also put together some information in there about what the fees will be so that we're pretty explicit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So July 1, we'll start doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I also included in your packet um, a protocol for conducting physical education classes on the synthetic turf fields. Did you have yeah. yeah. That was under a separate email. Right. That was under a separate email. Now, that is a draft, and that is the second version of the draft. And I put a draft together because teachers have started asking to use the fields for classes. And um, in fact, there was one teacher who was telling his students actually that they were going to go on the fields. And then uh, fortunately, a parent pointed it out to me and we reminded him that that wasn't going to happen at this point. Um, so I, I wrote my protocol and then I sent it to the K-12 um, coordinator for health and PE and in her conversations with um, middle and high school physical education teachers, they um, added some of those bold, emboldened pieces that are, you see. Now, 
Um, this is a draft. Um, none of it has been edited. Um, I took what they what they were recommending and, and passed it forward to you. Um, I uh, when I sent the original protocol, it was uh, for the high school. Um, and then they asked about the middle school, and I just said, you know, for so that we're not coming together at another point, go ahead and do something and let's see what we have. Um, I have to just remind the board that um, I had said last year publicly that we would not hold physical education classes on the synthetic <coughs> field. And so, um, I, you know, I don't want to go against my word. Mm -hmm. Can you interject, Bob? Yeah. My thought on this is that's what we had agreed to. Mm -hmm. And before we had the synthetic fields, the PE teachers were not teaching class right. on them. So let's right. just continue. We agreed not to change the policy. Right. We weren't, I don't, or I wasn't clear when we had that conversation. Are we talking middle and high? Yes. We're talking yes. all PE? Yes. Okay. All right. That, that was the piece that was not as explicit to me. So, I'm sorry. No, I'm done. No, the, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that <clears throat> there also was conversation about an EPA report that was due out in December. Um, and I've looked, I can't find. It didn't come out. It didn't come out. It's now due out this summer. It's now due but out this summer? It's even tentative. It is. I mean, who, who knows when it will be out? Right. Yeah, they have important stuff. But, um, there, yeah. <laughs> you you I guess said that they um, asked if they could use the field. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they have to use the fields because they haven't been using them. Right. No. So I, I just want to say I agree with Anita. I, I, I think that it would just simplify everything mm -hmm. if we kept to what you had said earlier <coughs> about not using them. That would be my... Okay. my it's less wear and tear on them. It, well, it would be yes, less uses, absolutely. So that um, I will get word out to the physical education department tomorrow that that is going to be our position. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I uh, I don't think it, I I think that the board statement and it's in the minutes mm -hmm. of the meeting will be mm -hmm. uh, very sufficient. Do we need to table this proposal for the time being? Well, you know, I I come back to it. the it becomes moot, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. well, when the August if I mean, when the EPA report ever does come out, I think that it at least has to be given consideration um, if it says. Really, you know, um, and maybe it would be that we still would not use it at middle school. We don't really want to use it at yeah. high school. What I don't know, but so at this point, we're only using it. For <coughs> That's fine. Again, we had said we would give it consideration okay. when it comes out. So I think we're kind of right. we have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and finally, this. Um, I have the, the matter of students participating in matters regarding social issues. And this has recently come up as an issue. Um, and I just wanted to um, talk with you about it and uh, inform you about some of the things that I've learned. So it began um, with the walkout in March. Um, in support of the, um, uh, sol in solidarity with the students who were killed in Florida. Um, they walked out at the, well, they really didn't walk up at the high school, they planned a program at the high school. Um, students spoke, um, students uh, wrote a poem, student, one student wrote a song. Um, they also did this at the middle school. And um, in speaking with Mr. Piazza, students approached him and asked about doing it. And in order to try to keep it in control, he intervened a little bit. Um, and, and probably more than a little bit. Um, so it really, theirs ended up not being a walkout either. It was, they walked to the auditorium. And um, 
really, I believe that what ended up happening during those sessions was that it was a conversation about school safety. And I think that it was that he used the opportunity to remind them of some of the, the things that we should remember to do. Then, um, so I, be, I heard from some parents about that because they were concerned, and legitimately so, um, that, um, that this was happening at school. And um, it, isn't, it wasn't so much the cause that they were concerned about, it was the, the matter of where does it stop? Because you could have a cause a day that you could, and then um, the other was what about instructional time? And um, this, uh, the walkout, or the walk to the auditorium was um, 17 minutes in length. Um, now that doesn't include passing time. Um, last week, I began to get some emails from middle school parents about uh, asking about a day of silence. And um, that's, that's planned also at the middle school, planned for April 27th, 2018. Um, which Why? is. I'm, I'm oh, getting. Oh, to, oh, yeah. sorry. I, I'm getting there. Uh, to show silence. <laughs> that's, right, silence. Everybody. that's so hard for me. <laughs> uh, and, and that is in support of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender population. Again, this was an initiative that was brought forward by students. There's a diversity group. There's not a diversity club at the middle school, but there's a diversity group uh, made up of, from my understanding, primarily seventh graders, and they were the ones that brought it, brought it forward. So, um, I, when you get into speech issues and student speech issues, which is why I <coughs> included that in your packet, I want to be sure that we are doing it the right way. And so I contacted uh, our legal counsel, and there were two things that um, I needed to find out. One was, are other clubs allowed to host days at the school? And then, do students plan other events? Because the other part of this is, Anyone can opt out and not be a part of this. This isn't a mandatory day of silence for everybody. And so, do other students plan events in which students can opt out? Now, because both of the answers to both of those questions is yes, and because this was student initiated, um, council believed that the day should go forward. Now, the concern voiced by parents I spoke with, um, again, was not so much about the topic, but more about where will it stop. And these two things come in very close proximity to one another, and you know, it's sort of the first time we're running up against that at the middle school. So I think that, um, and, and in talking with a number of parents, I think that there are some very good options before us that we need to um, put in place. I think that some of these things could be done at a gathering before school for students who are interested. Some of them could be done after school for students who are interested, but we sort of keep the school day, um, the school day. Um, now, I, I think we're too far along with April 27th, but I think going forward, we'd, I'd like to work out a protocol so that we are all clear going forward what this will be like in school. Mrs. Anderson? <laughs> so when you say a day of silence, does that mean a day of silence? That's, that's what they said. Now, according to Dr. Daly, they've done this at the high school before. And, um, it, it, but it hasn't happened in some time. And yes, they, they commit to a day of silence. And they have something they wear, I believe, they wear something that indicates that they won't be talking. Paul, I'm looking at you. Do you know anything? So <clears throat> they'd be wearing a sticker. Um, if uh, Mr. Piazza got the group together and he had a conversation with them, like if a teacher was to call on them, they would be answering the teacher. 
Okay. So it's not going to disrupt instruction at all. If now, they choose to be quiet, they choose to, but when it comes down to curriculum, they will be answering. The teachers will not be silent. Okay. <laughs> and, um, well, I think that originally when you hear your kids talking about a day of silence, you think, well, uh, no, Chil uh, the teachers will not be silent. I bet you they're in favor of it, though. Um, no, I, no but we, uh, teachers aren't forcing an opinion one way or the other. But um, the, um, and truly I believe that it is a small group of students that will participate in this. It is that I was at the middle school on Thursday, on Tuesday, and it really had gathered very little momentum um, at that time from what I could see. Mr. Piazza met with staff this mo um, yesterday morning and talked with them about what the day, um, what he expects the day to look like. And so, um, but the fact is that, you know, we are, we've encountered now two topics that are, are social issues and you know I think we just need to think about our practice but particularly at the middle school but the silence the day of silence isn't disruptive at all. If, no. Right. As you say, they, they respond to the teachers. It doesn't interfere with instruction. Right. It's a matter of wearing a, a stick. So I don't even know that mm -hmm. anything, I, 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 I would wonder that anything has to be put in place for that to happen. I mean, it just seems mm -hmm. a good idea. I mean, well, you know, I mean, a nice, a good way of, of, <laughs> of bringing things to others' attention. I think, so if they don't respond to the teacher, typically they're reprimanded. For that, I think if or the teacher has to cooperate with the whole process. Oh no, they're going to talk to. in class. Oh, they'll talk in yeah. class. Yeah, I just think that it's class. the other other areas that okay. Okay. that they wouldn't be talking. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, so if a teacher called on them, they would. They would answer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so. So are you looking for like a a procedure in place? No, I really wanted to just simply bring it up right now because it's gotten attention and there are parents who are concerned about it. I've received um, emails and phone calls um, about this. Part of the, pr part of the concern with the um, walkout in March was that um, they didn't know it until the night before um, through a um, robocall. And it was a snow day, so they didn't have an opportunity to get more information or to talk with um, anyone about it. Um, this, uh, this most recent one is the students work with Mr. Giametti, the guidance counselor, and so um, you know he is working on making certain that they are more communicative about that. Did you ask other districts what they did, or if I they got the same? pushback because I know Trumbull and some other district did the same thing on the same day they did this it's a national day yeah yeah, yeah. No, they, you know and it was the teachers are at least one or two teachers that I, I was in communication with yeah. they helped organize but you didn't talk to any district to see how they handled it if they had any pushback. I, I didn't go to, I've never had it before um, in my other two districts it's never been something that's um, then requested, but I can do that certainly. Yeah. I mean, just to inform, just to see, yeah, see mm -hmm. what how they handled it. Yeah. And, you know. yeah, I think it's a wonderful opportunity that we have mm -hmm. to. You have young people who are feeling mm -hmm. empowered or impassioned or empowered about something, and for us to have the ability to say, here is a, a, a way of channeling that, mm -hmm. is something that we need to continue to foster so mm -hmm. that we have students who remain active as adults, mm -hmm. you know, rather than complacency. You know, um, last year, uh, when there was um, a lot of protesting going on around the country um, concerning the police, we had a student at the high school ask if he could, uh, if they could organize a protest against the police, or about the police. And, um, they, uh, they, administration agreed, but they had it start at two o'clock after school was over, so that students, um, you know, who chose to be a part of that were. And I think that there's something 
something to be said about that. Uh, I mean, in addition to, I agree with, with Jen that I'm, I'm glad there's a conversation happening about this so that <coughs> class isn't interrupted. Um, but I did look this up knowing that it was going to be on the agenda, and I, I found a lot of case law, Tinker versus Des Moines, yes. Granted versus the city of Rockford, and it all sort of centers around the Equal Protection Clause in the 14th Amendment mm -hmm. that actually does cover students having free speech as long as it's not mm -hmm. obscene, illegal, disruptive, dangerous, or unlawful. Right. So, no. yeah, which is pretty much what we have in our Dead policy, policy. Yep. Right. Yep. It's the same. The, um, the Tinker case uh, goes back to 1943, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, 68, uh, I think. Vietnam. Yeah, and then there was an, what's that? The Tinker case was 60s Vietnam. Oh, it was in the 60s. There was, I'm forgetting, I'm Black confusing Black that. Was, yeah. There was another in 1943 um, that was decided and then th was not anything until Tinker in uh, 68. But um, it really comes down to those criteria that we've had to look at for our students as well. Um, so I, I raised that, oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say, uh, when they had the uh, middle school open house, what struck me was that platform yeah. right under the, the staircase, mm -hmm. which can be used as, as a gathering spot. Mm -hmm. And what a good, to have something before school, mm -hmm. during lunch waves, mm -hmm. or after school, yeah. you know, as long as it's respectful <coughs> and following the policy, I think that's, a, you know, uh, a way to go for right. students. Right. So really my purpose in bringing it up was really more informational because um, I know that some parents were concerned about it and I said that I would be talking with you about it and that um, you know, we certainly will monitor that it's not a daily occurrence. Thank you. And I will, be, um, I will go to the middle school on the 27th just to check in with, to be, um, you know, just to be available. Thanks, Dr. Connor. Okay. I just wanted to give the board um, two quick updates. We held our kindergarten screening um, last week, and we had um, 55 students at Clintonville, 30 at Montouise, 41 at Ridge, and 42 at Green Acres. So our numbers are kind of all over the um, place at this point. Did you I was paying attention. That's okay. Yes. Can you say the numbers? Yep. First? Sure. Clintonville, 55. Montouise, 30. Ridge Road 41, Green Acres 42. So we'll keep watching those numbers and the registration materials are still online so anybody can go on and register that way and then contact the school and um, have any questions answered. And the numbers look like last year compared to last year about the same? Um, some a little lower. Um, Clintonville is our, our highest one at 55 obviously but similar to what they have this year because they have the three classrooms. So we're just keeping a close eye on them and the um, principals continue to monitor them. Hey, Melinda, yes. do you usually get an influx of registrations over the summer? We do. Yeah. We get a lot, um, yeah. particularly in August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it really challenging um, because you can pick up quite a few um, second week of August and, you know, two or three in a building could be enough to have to move a class, Scramble. you know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So um, we... In the summer, we call almost every week, um, starting in July, to all the schools, and we kind of just take like quick checks of the enrollment, ask the secretaries and the principals where numbers are, so that we're monitoring the class sizes. But K is definitely the biggest wild card. And does, I, I had heard in a board of finance meeting that Clintonville is at like 56 percent capacity or something like that. that. So there's room for an additional kindergarten if need be, or oh, there's oh, there there's definite space there. there yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've got some, you know, the all-purpose room and yep. some extra space there, so. Okay. And then the other thing I just wanted to update the board on um, was our nature's classroom. The principals continue to um, work with families on that. Um, we have 168 um, children going to nature's classroom and 87 going to outdoor ed. And um, the per student cost for nature's classroom is $344 and it's 128 for the outdoor education. And that's without any supplementing from um, PTAs. So each school is kind of handling that in their own way, how they want to supplement. 
and um, the principals tell me that anybody who um, was in need of any financial assistance, they're working that through too. So um, I'll keep you posted. It's um, coming up in a few weeks, so um, they've been working really hard to get everything all situated. It is close. It is close, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Tina. I'm sorry. I found it. So it's going to be. But then I decided to remain silent. <laughs> Practicing. You get a sticker. <laughs> um, as Brian said, we're, we're um, trending as, um, as anticipated um, with our costs. We're still monitoring the insurance. Um, Nothing else is really changing. Uh, I put in some requests to do some transfers to cover some costs within within our you know what we have right now as a budget item. Um, any additional any grants um, or funding that we might get for excess costs um, will come in May, so I won't know that until um, at the end of May. Um, but other than that, we're just um, moving things along. And trying to see uh, what our final budget number is going to be from the Board of Finance. Do we know how? Um, I'm, I'm sure you do know, but like where were the the three hundred thousand um, dollar? We're watching all the other it? line items, so we're still in a budget freeze, um, and there's the other line items will be will be absorbed in those at this point. Are there specific line items that it's being absorbed in? Like, are we cutting back on anything in particular in order to cover that, or is it? Are you talking about next year? I'm talking about for this year. For okay. this year, yeah. for this year, um, we're looking at um, other items within the benefits because um, part of we've encumbered some some money is for like the dental, and we're watching that. So if we, you know, have some money left there, it's it's going to be a little bit from everything maybe. Um, but I haven't really um, looked at. We're waiting for the final. Um, our biggest costs usually are during the winter um, months, so we're going through and, and seeing what's left in each of the lines and taking what we can from all of it. It's going to be kind of a collaborative effort in that. Is there a risk that there will be negative consequences inside classrooms in order to cover for the deficit? Right now, if... Um, if there's a need in the classroom, the budget re the request comes forward, and we have the discussion uh, with uh, Dr. Cronin and Melinda. And if it's needed, then they get what they need. The teachers, students are getting what they need, so we're not impacting that at any time. I think that as I was looking through the budget um, before the meeting, workers' compensation had money. Um, when you start looking at particular areas, yeah, there's <coughs> not impact students in our areas. Yeah, there's other places that we're gonna we can pull it from. It's we're just waiting for the final. Okay, you know, to answer your question, Amanda, yeah. that was not at risk. And this is good. Yeah. This is excellent. yeah. So yeah. thank you for that. No, but absolutely, what I, we really try to keep that a main focus is making sure that none of this is going to impact the students. And so it might be cutting something else, but it, we make sure that the students get what they need. In prior years, have we seen deficits this large? Um, I believe so. Uh, we yeah. have. At this point. At this yeah. yeah, at this point in the year. And then uh, things seem to balance out in, in the end. I can go back and check and look at those, <coughs> um, look at some of those numbers, but I believe that, that has been. This year it seems very heavily weighted um, to insurance. It is. To, to benefits. Insurance um, has been a kind of a hot topic because since I've started. Mm -hmm. Because we did that self-funding. That's why we... So and people know that what happened with that was when we developed our budget and you approved the budget, it was fu fully insured. And then after the budget was adopted, the, um, the town decided we were going to move over to self-insured. And so that that's where the challenge came in um, for us. So I realized that, you know, it looks like there was like a little bit of an underestimation for this fiscal year for the self-funded insurance costs. And in the discussions for the upcoming fiscal year, like we've heard, you know, a $1.2 million increase and then the Board of Finance has come back and said, we think it's only 900000 Are we at risk for repeating the same 
calculation error next year by approximately the exact same amount of money. With this self-funding, it is a risk. Um, they, with this year's budget that we, with our anticipations, it's um, a little bit more calculated or better calculated than with the current budget that we're in because like Dr. Tron had said, at the last minute, it was kind of changed, so we're kind of um, trying to figure a few things out, but in the proposed budget, um, we looked, you know, at what those actual costs are, what the trends are, and it's a little bit more of a science that we've used with that, um, talking to our brokers about it. Um, they've been very helpful, and um, there's a lot of education that I've received from them in that um, concept. Is there a risk that we could, you know, still have an issue with insurance next year? Absolutely, because we are self-funded. So I think my question is more around, I realize that you've done a ton of work um, and that there's been a lot of analysis going mm -hmm. into the insurance line item for next year. So does that analysis still support the $1.2 million increase that we had originally requested? So that's come down a little bit from the estimate that we gave in December and the Board of Finance is fully aware of that. So that's where they're making some of their cuts. Um, and we, you know, we continue to have that conversation with them. Um, the, um, the issue of it coming down um, is monitored through the broker? Correct. Be through the either Anthem and or the broker. So they um, come back with their anticipations. It's, it's a whole, and I would be more than happy to explain how they do this and why they do what they do and, and how, what the trends are. Um, like I said, there's a lot of education there, so I understand where they're coming from. We're doing, you know, a little bit better than they originally anticipated back in December. So, you know, as we go forward, um, you know, th it, it's kind of a moving target, but it's not to say that even though we're anticipating to have a lower cost and that's where the trend is going, it's not to say that we have you know, a couple of bad pregnancies or, you know, something can throw us over the top and you can have a few, you know, bad cases, you know, somebody finds out they have cancer or those are the things that are just not anticipated. I fully so under understand that and I know that it's a really volatile it's moving target. It is very, it's, it's a moving target. So the brokers right now, they're not saying that we're at 1.2, they're saying that we're closer to the 900,000? Yeah, it's come down. I don't know about the 900,000, but it has come down. Okay. okay. Can you have the number for us for our next board meeting? Oh, sure. Okay. Because yeah, so yeah. by then we'll be down another month, and then mm -hmm. we'll have a, an updated number. So we've known it's come down. So if you have that by the next board meeting. When, we, when they give us our final budget number from the Board of Finance, we'll have that okay. new number in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because like it's 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 a like I said it's a trend it's a <coughs> it's like an eighteen month period that they do an estimate it's like the previous twelve months and then anticipating the next six months so it's like I said it's so a whole Tina am I correct that they they adjust month by month they do based on right. what our claims are with oldest the oldest yep. month falling off yep. mm -hmm. the oldest month the oldest month off. falling off and the reason oh, why okay. it did go down is because eighteen months ago we had a very high claim month. So that dropped off, and the new one that they picked up wasn't as high as the month that got dropped off. So, so that's why actuaries work. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, it was very interesting because now my questions were, is, well, what was in that high cost month? What happened? Mm -hmm. Is it something that is a continual? Is it something that um, could happen again? And they said, nope, it was, you know, typically it, what happened was a one-time thing in that particular member that cost has been fixed you know <coughs> it was you know a heart attack or whatever it was but you know those costs are you know it, it's not like a cancer thing where it's going to be every single month the same cost or you know it was like a one-time event i think i share your sense of uh, trepidation to committing to anything because of the volatility of this business. Right. We can so come down as much as we want with the insurance, right. but it's going to be, it is what it is, and we are responsible for the claims and paying our, our bills. So it's 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 still very, it is volatile, and, and you just have to watch it on a, 
I, literally a daily basis. My, my general concern <coughs> for next year is earmarking enough so that if we find ourselves in a position where we're down $600,000 in December of next year, we're not going to have to touch what's inside the classrooms again. You know, we don't want to overestimate because we don't. We want to be sensitive to. We're hoping the that we're not overestimating. I mean, we're really truly looking at that very carefully. But again, it could be anything. Anything could happen. You know, you have a couple of, of bad months, and and we don't have a contingency, right? The town does, but we don't. We, we're not allowed. We're to. not allowed to carry one. So we are responsible that. for everything. And. There's no going back. Thanks, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Tina. Mm -hmm. Anything else? That's it. Okay. We may have a motion to approve the financial statements for the period ending March 31st, 2018. So moved. Second. Any Second. further discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. I went to, um, before I go to public comment, when I went over to my uh, list, I went over new business and Randy did have some new business to discuss so do I need to add that back to the agenda or are we able to bring that back? I just go back. You just go back? Okay. So we met as an, um, Anita decided to form an ad hoc committee regarding the athletic fields, the turf fields and so we met for the first time last week and um, <clears throat> we met for an hour and a half and basically what we talked about was um, the calendar and how the calendar was going to be set up and how people could reserve the field and um, which people would would be gone through whether it was a town field or a turf field and we've come up with a system in speaking with Mr. Blumenthal um, who is essentially going to be you know the head person to contact for school fields and then Mr. Del Vecchio would be the person to contact for town fields so this is a process that is still being um, um, worked out, but that was pretty much the conversation. Also, Mr. Diana is very much involved in the conversation as well because he needs to be aware of which <coughs> fields are going to be used and if they need to be, you know, swept or graded or whatever the case may be because of weather or lined. Um, he can. He's a big part of that communication. So. Um, we talked about the maintenance of the fields. We talked about how people are using the turf fields and how they're getting in and out of there. And at this point right now, um, Phil is helping out with opening the gates and locking the gates. The coaches have all been given, coaches for our school system as well as coaches for um, town leagues have all been given what they call the, I think he called them the turf commandments, which are all of the rules for using the turf, you know, things like no gum, no sunflower seeds, things like that, um, the certain kind of cleats that they need to use so that this way that the turf is maintained as best as it can be. And they were also asked to sweep the field, meaning, you know, visually and walk the field to make sure that everything is okay and that if there are any issues to report it to either Mr. DeVecchio, Mr. Blumenthal, or Mr. Diana, so this way they could be addressed. Um, we are going to move on with our meetings. I am going to send out an email now that I know um, Jen can come on April 24th at 6 o'clock. We meet in here, um, which is the Tuesday after vacation. And um, I believe we are going to start the discussion of the fees for the use of the turf field. Um, and we need to, we're going to discuss that for, um, just as we did the, the fee schedule before, for nonprofit and non, what, what was the, what was the top of that? For profit. For profit. Yeah. Or and non and North Haven. E yes. And then there was also the nonprofit organizations too, right? What was that? Commercial. Commercial and for profit organizations. Okay. So my question is for <coughs> next, for next meeting, can we get on the agenda to have a discussion of that same exact category? for the turf fields because I believe that the um, main discussion is more about town teams using the turf field as opposed to non-town or for-profit organizations. And the reason I ask that is because I know Andy Del Vecchio has already been contacted by AAU and travel teams mm -hmm. that are for-profit organizations that would like to use the field. And, um, you know, that would, that would be some kind of charge that we all agreed we would do because they're not, you know, they're for-profit organizations. So um, <clears throat> last month in our packet, we did get um, price 
charts. I think Cheshire, Cheshire was in there, Shelton was in there, West Haven was in there. They do have some of their fee schedules for their turf fields. So maybe if we look back at those papers and then maybe if we could put it on the agenda yeah. to discuss next maybe month. Maybe. And then maybe um, Mr. Del Vecchio, Mr. Blumenthal can start using them at least for the for-profit organization. Okay. So that's okay with everybody. Also, can you start with your on your discussions to the responsibilities of, you know, right now we say Phil's working in there, but if um, for profit and then for the town of North Haven, who's responsible for opening that gate? Mm -hmm. Who's responsible for locking yeah. that gate? Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. We'll talk about that a little more. Definitely. Okay. I don't. Sorry. Okay. Anyone have anything else for Randy on that? No. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Sure. I apologize. For that. That's okay. We'll make sure we have that on the agenda next month. Um, public comment. Go ahead. Hi. So to um, this is your first visit it for is. custom we service. Really have to go <laughs> you do. You need to go to the microphone and just announce um, yourself. Danielle and I are together. Um, okay. Don Sykes from 80 Bishop Street. Danielle Santa Francis Court. Stolen we are. You can push it down. I don't, right? They can move that down. It's okay. Um, uh, we're here tonight to discuss the, the social issues, um, as Dr. Cronin brought up to you. Um, I have this whole speech. Um, you did touch upon a lot of the points that we wanted to talk about. I do feel like you've downplayed it a little bit. And, you know, this is our opinion. You have yours. Um... I, I believe you downplayed it just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We were kind of blindsided by that walkout because that was not only just um, 17 minutes in remembrance of those precious lives that were lost. and <coughs> That was an organized event by a group called Hashtag Enough. <coughs> it's a very controversial group with a controversial agenda. So that march really was set for gun control. I know Mr. Piazza, um, you know, he tried to make it where it was just gonna be remembering the lives for 17 minutes. Um, you also said that the high school, um, they did go outside. They did go outside. And there's, yes. there's footage of them talking about gun control. There was, Excuse me? There's footage on Facebook that students posted that they did talk about other items, not just remembering and singing songs. So, um... Dawn, yeah. can I ask you just to get closer? Cause oh, I, sure. I know you're <laughs> sure. Um, so you said that there were, there's video of that? There okay. was video. Mm -hmm. There was. I, I, I don't have possession of the video, mm -hmm. but it was seen on Facebook. So there was other topics that day, other than remembering mm -hmm. the 17 lives. I'm not going to go through this whole speech that I made. Um, I would like to give you guys a copy. I'll, sure. I could leave a copy with you. Because it's just, you know, our heartfelt reasoning behind all this. Um, the event that's scheduled on the 27th, I just, I don't understand why it has to be brought into the school system. I, I just really don't. It's a very controversial, sensitive issue. Danielle and I and the couple of other people that are in agreement with us. Um, it's just, we are not politically driven. We are not biased against anybody's beliefs. We're none of that. We're just parents who don't want this brought into school. Uh, I just don't. Um, and like I said, I'm deviating from this beautiful speech I've written all eloquently with all our points. But, you know, my emotions are getting the best of me. Um, I would just like you to reconsider this event that's coming up on the 27th because now there's a school vacation. Again, there's a lot of parents, there's no awareness being made that this is happening. There was no awareness, uh, awareness about that walkout. We've all saw it on the news. We all saw it in social media. I guess, but in our minds, we were just, oh, North Haven's never gonna entertain that. So for us, we were blindsided by that. And then when we heard this was happening, um, 
and again, it, we're just not in agreement with it. This is going to be one of those things that's going to be split down the middle. But as Dr. Cronin mentioned, where do you draw the line? <laughs> like, you know, are, are you going to have five of these per day? Who gets to decide which one takes prevalent, prevalence over the next? You know, it, it is, if a student came to Mr. Piazza and said, I wanted to celebrate military family awareness on the 27th, but another student said, we want to do the, the silence for the controversial issue, which it is controversial. It's sensitive, it's controversial. So how does he get to make that choice which one he thinks is more important? That's where we're coming from. We need you to decide and maybe possibly put an amendment to your policies where you're going to draw the line. Are you going to allow all of them? And if you are, how are you going to fit that into a daily curriculum? So I guess that's where I'm coming from without this, this long speech, and I know I deviated away from it. But, you know, for us, it's an emotional, it's an emotional topic for us. You know, these teenagers in middle school, not so much for the high school, I can't speak for them. They do need to be aware of this. They do, they're gonna see it in college. They need to be ready for that. The middle schoolers are still tweens. They're very impressionable. So, I'm very leery of this staying at the middle school level. I'm, you know, and like I said, I'm sorry. I veered off the wonderful speech I had here for you with all the points <laughs> right on point. And Sometimes when we Dr. Speak Cronin, apart, really, he did well. get to the points for the most part. I, but I some of them are downplayed. And I guess what I want to say to you is this is such a controversial issue that I think, I think that maybe we should sit down as a small group and maybe talk when we're calmer and emotions are getting the best of us. And you've had more time to see where we're coming from, as just as I'm seeing where you're coming from. And you know, you threw a lot of things at us with these tinker laws and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Of course we're not prepared for that. So give us a chance too. So that's what I ask. <laughs> and I thank you for listening, even though I went off my <laughs> <laughs> Danielle's going to go over with some questions. Thank you, John. Hi. So I do agree Dr. Cronin maybe didn't touch all the points. Um, I think our main concern for being here is that when Mr. Piazza went through with the walkout, he didn't follow proper procedure. Um, I know that on there is a form called the 2010 that a principal would need to submit. Is that true? in order to hold these events before it happens? I know Dr. Cohn and I had spoken about that, and you had said that he would need to put an approval in at least a week before. I have a, I have a copy of it. Right. I have a copy I, of it. I didn't, I didn't refer to it as a 2010, though. Huh? Right, oh, no, I'm asking if- I don't think if, it's a 2010, though. Um, 2010. Well, I'm asking if there was- A 1210, Form 1210. But yeah. no, I did, you're absolutely right. When we talked, yeah. I said that um, we should, that it should be brought to our attention at least a week before. Right, and so being that it wasn't, um, how do we know, is there something in that saying that he will not comply with the board again, or is he allowed to just have these events on the on a spur of a moment when he feels necessary without okay. any board approval? Well, I think it, when we spoke, I believe it, when I was talking with you, Mrs. Balzano, I explained that um, that I have addressed that, um, and I don't expect that it will happen again, that you don't have ample um, information or ample time um, in which to respond. Um, but it, I, you know, it, it, unfortunately the march was done it was done right and, uh, well our concern is that it will keep happening mm -hmm. um and i know the high school put an approval in with with you and you had approved that but the middle school did not the high school put in a, uh sent me a copy of a parent a letter that they were sending home right you had said you had received yeah. that and right. and that you were okay with that right. but that you were not aware that the middle school was also planning this right um so 
what are the procedures going forward now for Mr. Piazza at the middle school to just say, hey, tomorrow I'm going to have uh, whatever I kind think, of day? And I think that you're, um, I think you're minimizing um, and misinterpreting what I'm saying. Um, it's a personnel matter. I'm not going to get into specifics, but I made it very clear that I need to have information in advance of an event taking place. Right. So was there disciplinary action I, enforced? It's a personnel matter, and I can't talk with you about that okay, legally. So, um, but according to, you had said you were going to meet with the council on this matter, and then you were going to get back to me that previous Count week? Council. Yeah. What council? I'm not sure. That's what I was wondering. You had said you were going to meet with the council, talk about the laws, if Mr. Piazza did actually in oh, fact the board. Break, break any? Is it council? Legal council? Oh, long legal council. Maybe, maybe, oh, maybe, yes. Maybe. Yes. I, and I did talk with legal council. Right. And no, he did not break laws. Okay. And so the, and so you said it was the series 4,000. And so according to that, it was very <clears throat> vague as to how we can go about in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess my question is, where do we draw a line and how much of this is going to be allowed during classroom time? And it also was... Um, more than 17 minutes it was 17 minutes of silence plus passing time plus after the silence mr piazza did speak and then children did speak so they did miss quite a bit of, of class. so if you heard what i said tonight there were two instances that happened in very close proximity to one another at the middle school so um clearly we will take steps and i will bring information to the board that of how this will be done and managed going forward. No, there will not be, as I said to the board, a concern that I have. I share your concern that we're not going to be doing um, a day a day. Um, I share your concern about instructional time. And um, so I have to make certain that that, um, that is honored. And I believe, confident, I'm confident Mr. Piazza understands that. Okay. And also there's the concern of safety for the children, for mm -hmm. mainly all the children, but there was no police requested for the middle school children. There was at the high school level. Uh, the police were paid overtime, so there was no police presence, and I'm guessing it's because it's middle school. They maybe felt they didn't need it or No, it's, it, there was police presence at the high school because the students went outside. Right. The middle school, they did not go outside. They right. stayed within the building. Yeah. So I guess the question is, was there extra staff in the hallways to make sure? See, our main concern is, you know, there were children who got up and left the room, and there were children who chose not to participate. Mm -hmm. So the children who did not participate are now essentially sitting ducks, and it does divide a classroom. It does divide a school because you're forced to take a side in these instances. Well, when you say sitting ducks, yeah. do you mean that they're not supervised? No, they were supervised, okay. absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, their peers, uh, staff members, everyone can see where their family stands on certain issues that mm -hmm. maybe shouldn't be brought into the school system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my concern is that there's safety of the children in that, how do you know walking down the hall, some of the kids are saying, oh, that one decided to stay back and maybe tease them later. Mm -hmm. Or after school, was there extra uh, teachers outside to make sure that everything was going normal? Um, I, I think that um, I, I have great confidence that the teachers address this in a, um, professional, a professional and a reasonable way with students. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't think that anybody um, <coughs> was uh, made to feel unless themselves it was never the intent to make someone feel different or other than right um, it, it was not and i spoke with mr piazza about that and he did admit to saying that he did not take into consideration the other children mm -hmm. that were not participating meaning he didn't give them a platform to maybe meet in a in a place all together where they could see other faces who didn't want to you know take part whether it was for or against political, who just weren't didn't want to be involved. He did say he would think about those children in the future, but the concern is that they should have been thought about right then and there as well as the other children who decided to ho have this walkout. Mm -hmm. And so I think 
not giving them the opportunity to also be with like-minded people at the same time was really unfair to them. Okay. Thank, so. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. I'll give you copies so you can get a better idea of why we're yeah, no, please, please do, do. Next public comment. <coughs> I don't have this woman go behind us. Right? She's okay. new also. My name is Christina Fontaine. I live on 80 Postman Highway. Um, and thank you for adding, being able to, I'm like not familiar with how the board meetings work or very well anyway. Um, so my name is Christina. Like I said, I've been a resident of North Haven for nine years. My son is currently slated to go to Clintonville Elementary School, so he's one of those 55 <laughs> um, this coming year. Um, being a parent, along with my husband who works full-time, I'm on the hunt for before and after care programs um, that are able to um, watch my child while I have to go to work at a reasonable cost. So as you likely know, North Haven only offers aftercare <coughs> services via the YMCA, but they don't offer before care services. Um, and the cost of aftercare services are $349 a month for members, and that doesn't include the membership fee. And then it's $405 a month for non-members. Uh, you may also be aware that the Ridge Road PTA started their own before care services run by a teacher's assistant that costs $8 a day. Uh, or $40 a week. So while I think Ridge Road PTA certainly has a great idea in running their own before care services, I also think that it's unfortunate that the district isn't doing anything to address the needs of the parents who are willing to pay for said services, potentially at other schools, or maybe have the PTAs, uh, you know, I'm, because I'm a new and coming parent in the elementary schools, having something like that being provided at possibly all of the schools in North Haven. Um, also, in speaking to one of the principals at the elementary school, when I asked them about before care services, her response was, you know, we get asked that question a lot, perhaps reach out to the superintendent. And so that's what brought me to the board meeting and kind of figuring out, okay, well, how do I go from here and find out more information about this? Um, there are other towns that I've looked into that offer before and after care services. So just to kind of give you a general idea, that Bramford offers before and after care and they charge $410 a month to parents. And then they also accept something called Care for Kids. Um, Milford charges $75 a week for before and after care. Manchester, $324 a month. Clinton, $260 a month. Durham, $265 a month. And Mansfield, $120 a week. Um, I don't know why certain towns offer before care and after care and some don't. Um, but I feel like in today's day and age, it's not an unreasonable request to have um, before care services as well as the after care. And I've looked into several private practices in the town of North Haven, including Sunnyside Up. They're a private, uh, privately owned company that does before and after care and the bus will <coughs> bring your child to and from the school, but they often have a wait list. I'm on the wait list. Um, and then Kinder Care also offers it but theirs is a whopping $190 a week, and for several hours, that's extremely costly for a middle-class family, such as myself. The rec center also offers it, but they have an income cap, so if you make over a certain amount, you don't qualify for their program. So this leaves us parents with very little options, and um, you know, it's not, I can't just quit my job and bring my kid back and forth to school, so it kind of makes it difficult. Um, so I don't know, I'm recommending that maybe using the YMCA, who the town is already contracted with to see if they could possibly offer before care services or look into how other uh, districts such as Brantford run their programs to see if we could incorporate some of um, the same services. And I feel like it's not, it doesn't seem irrational to me in, in the 21st century with so many parents who are working and you have both moms and dads working, you know, going in um, to request something like this. I want to say a couple of things in response to you. In previous years, we have asked the YMCA to run programs before school. Okay. To the best of my recollection, I will check on this again, mm -hmm. they could not get the enrollment okay. in order to hold them. 
Um, and I will speak with the Y again and ask that they um, put that out again for parents. Okay. Uh, so um, we will certainly look into that. The $80 a week, $8 a day at Ridge Road, um, I have to look into. Um, uh, there are a number of factors there that um, are of concern. Um, a paraprofessional uh, and um, that we're doing that without board approval. Um, those things all have to be looked into. So okay. thank you for making me aware of that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you just give us your name so we can get back to you? Sure. Christina. The C. We're going to ask for your phone number, so we'll get it after oh, okay. the meeting. <laughs> okay. Sure. Or if you want to write it down on a piece of paper and just, just give it to okay. us, Christina. Thank I you. I think some of the Y staff that works in the afternoon also works in the morning at the Y itself. At the YMCA? At the YMCA. In Hamden, In Hamden right? itself, right. So some of those same staff that are used as site coordinators for yep. the afternoon are sometimes the same people. Okay. Um, and they also, they have student volunteers also in the afternoon to help okay. out that are bused to the different schools from the middle school. Okay. I, I just met with the YMCA director probably two weeks ago, and she's really interested in doing more things with the district if we can. So I will reach out to her and see if we can at least survey parents again to see if we have interest in order to do a before school program. Great, thank you. Yes, that, You're welcome. Be, and maybe there's a way to do a blast um, since to the kindergarten parents. Right, to the new families to right. see if there's an interest since it's a new pool of, of people. Yeah. Because I, I sent my kids to kinder care prior to the, to the inception of the Y program and that was a huge relief once that bill, I understand, that's a right. huge, a huge amount yeah. of money to pay. <coughs> Mary White, Summer Lane. So I have about um, just six questions. It's or comments, <laughs> not that many <laughs> for me anyway. Um, so can um, you give us uh, the status of um, the application that the town of North Haven, um, uh, I don't know if it's the Board of Ed or specifically the town of North Haven, uh, made to uh, apply for funds for um, um, relative to the uh, additional $10 million Governor Malloy released uh, for the purpose of school security. Uh, we know that North Haven um, did <coughs> not receive any funds uh, for school security, um, which was um, from the initial uh, re first release, which was $50 million. So I, I know that you had... We had, we had re we received money from that first release. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you didn't. Yes. You didn't. Um, we did. Okay. We did. Right. And we applied for the second release. Okay. And um, unfortunately, we're denied. We were denied. Okay. And then the third release, the request had to come from the town. Okay. And so we don't know the status of, of that. Well, that one is already done. Now there talk of there's talk of Governor Malloy releasing ten million dollars additional. So we're watching for that. Okay. I haven't received any information from the State Department yet. Okay. So the monies that um, we did receive. Um, can you tell us how much we, we received and can you tell us what, um, where will that money go as far as um, enhancing school security? Sure, it's actually where that money went. Um, it was about $90,000, I think. This is, a, this is a while ago. And we did um, security systems, um, swipe cards and cameras. Um, we did cameras um, throughout the high school. Um, inside as well as out and um, I mean, those are the things that come to my mind right away okay. it was probably five years ago that first round of money okay. was released okay Mary I have to just say uh, for questions on security I'm very uncomfortable talking about right. them right uh, on, on public television television okay but when there's something you want to know what did you do with the money what did you do with uh, what security did you call put in place Let me call. doctor <laughs> Absolutely. a call okay. and, and if he can share it he will share okay it. thank you so much um, okay 
Yes, so this one is for Goldie. Um, so from last month, um, I had asked uh, you to please tell us what items the building committee paid to have the foundations or supports installed for a future apparatus, you know, relative to the, the turf fields, and you, you didn't recall and you were going to look into it for us. Yeah, we haven't met yet, so I haven't been able to get that information. Okay, all right, because like I said, we know that the turf fields need the bleachers, the signs, and, and so forth, so it's just kind of wondering. I, unfortunately, I can't remember what meeting that I saw that they approved funds mm -hmm. for the foundations or the supports. Yeah, I know okay. there were also discussion about electrical outlets, also that were supposed to be close to the bleachers and uh, and things like that. Okay, so all right. Meetings coming up before Monday. our next. That's meeting? not set in stone yet because okay. we're trying to get some quorum and people they didn't have enough people. If um, you don't have the meeting before our next meeting. Yeah, Gary can send it to me. Mm -hmm. So you're looking. The information you want is basically what was approved to yes. go on the field. For future basically. apparatus, whatever okay. that might be, whether it be bleachers, because I know there was quite a discussion about, well, how many bleachers do you want? Yeah. Do you want two that are a thousand? Do you want four that are five hundred? Or you know what I mean? And I don't really know what they, the committee decided. Um, I just remember them talking <clears throat> about it and wanting to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the decision had to be made because if you're going to put in the foundation. Or supports or whatever you had a the committee had to decide how much they wanted and where they wanted them so that's mm -hmm. why I was kind of wondering okay um, were we able to get the pricing of the key card system for the turf fields when we talked about that last month that key card system we did um, no I don't have that um, I will get that for you though Mary okay I'm just kind of curious um, okay. That, that was paid through the uh, the building project, Goldie. So that would probably come. What was that? No, is that for the field? That that's that's the field. Oh, the for access, the field. The access, the access turf field. Yeah. No, there was a talk about um, instead of having um, someone from the town, or like a custodian, be there, that the coaches who were using the turf <coughs> fields, they would have access. Oh, but okay. it, they called it a key card system. Right. And then some people thought, uh, most people thought it was a great idea. And yeah. so I was just wondering about how much. I was just kind of curious. <coughs> we talked about that a little bit when we um, had our had our meeting last week or a week and a half ago. Um, the, the fence is about, what is it, Goldie, five feet high? The fence? Yeah, the fence itself about four and a half, five feet I high. don't know exactly, but it's your standard fence yes. that's usually used around the field. Yeah. So, the, so it is locked right now, and um, uh, Mr. Diana at this point, had, in discussions with other people, it, it has been decided that right now he is the only, uh, he's the gatekeeper okay. of the fields right now because to hand out keys or cards or whatever to so many people would... You know, just until we get a hold of, of, of how the, you know, the field is going to be um, looked over and, sure. and maintained and all of that. So we just want to get that under our belts a little bit. Okay. But um, the, uh, the other part, too, was, you know, the, the fence is not that high where if you're talking about safety, whenever there's a fence, the kids are going to hop it if they want to. So having the gate that you typically walk through locked isn't necessarily going to keep kids off. We can do as much as we can mm -hmm. for that. But... Um, if they want to hop the fence, they're, they're going to. Yeah. So as far as coaches having access, um, that just hasn't happened <coughs> yet. And really, if you're just talking about giving a coach a key, it might not be necessary to go through that huge expense if all we're talking about is a key to a lock or right. a combination to a lock or something to have access through the, the walking gate. Do you know what I mean? Right. So we may so not need it then. Probably won't need it because... Okay. You know, if you're talking about the fence to keep kids out, to keep them safe, they're going to hop it anyway. And if you're talking about access for a team to get in and out, that could just be a regular lock. So we did talk about it a little bit. Okay. My guess would be that if we're talking about just giving access to teams and coaches, that we wouldn't have to go to such an extreme expense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, it was mentioned that there is still a $300,000 deficit um, in the uh, BOE's budget. Um, Last Tuesday um, at the town um, budget hearing, 
uh, First Selectman Mike Frieda had said that he was going to be making a, crest, a request uh, to the superintendent about lowering the BOE's budget by, I believe he said $500,000. And I was wondering, um, has that been done? Is it, is it even, I don't even know if it's possible. Um, no, I, I it um, discussed <laughs> it in one ear and out the other. <laughs> it, it isn't, no, it hasn't been discussed. Um, all I know is what was reported from not the past Board of Finance meeting, but the meeting before when they talked about <coughs> reducing our budget to 3% increase. Okay. That's the only thing that I know. Um, and uh, I know that they are meeting next week to set next the budget. Next Wednesday, yes. And so. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, let's see. So um, during uh, the meeting, you, you had discussed, you all discussed uh, the um, rental policy uh, for facilities, uh, you know, for, for profit. Um, so is there any way that that, the policies that you all were discussing, is there any way we could have access to that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It it's um, online. Is it, on, is yes. it hard to find? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. If you go onto, onto the North Haven website and right. go to the Board of Education, right. you'll yeah, find the link to oh, okay. policies. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And I think the, uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, was relative to um, the students and the um, you know, First Amendment right, you know, free speech. And, and ha it's, it's delicate, okay? And I, the way I'm coming from as a parent, um, um, but not a parent of, of a student in school, he's, he's in college, um, is that I, I agree that, I, I believe that you should have a policy in place. And I believe, um, or I agree, that it, it should really be s specific as to we support the student's right to free speech. Uh, however, we need to kind of have rules as to when we're going to allow it. So, for example, I liked what you said when you said before school mm -hmm. or after school, mm -hmm. because I think then it really takes it out mm -hmm. of school. Mm -hmm. It takes it out of the classroom because, you know, certain kids may be walking around wearing a sticker, and and then, you know, I worry that kids could end up while they're supporting a particular you know whatever it is they could end up making themselves a target mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I, if they want to do that they have a right to do that but I really think that we should have a policy that these types of things they need approval uh, in, in enough certain span of time and they should be before school or after school and right. I think yeah. that that is the, is the <coughs> way to go. Yes, I, everybody's I, protected, and this and the instruction sure. is not interrupted, and nobody's a target, nobody's left out. You know what I mean? So I mean that's right. That's what and, I would support. Uh, we will um, we will do as much as we can, um, and again because this is such a delicate matter, that um, you know I will continue to seek guidance from legal counsel in terms of making certain that we're doing it right. But yes, I, I agree we have All to right. find other ways. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Yes. Uh, I'm Carrie Swanson. I live on Powder Road. I have two children in the public schools, one at North Haven Middle School and one at Monoese Elementary School. Um, thank you for keeping your word with regard to um, children in PE on the turf fields. I understand um, that, you know, there's a desire to use the new fields, but um, we discussed previously waiting until the EPA report comes out, and I believe in waiting for the science. Um, thank you also for respecting the First and Fourteenth Amendment rights of our children. Um, I am a parent of a child at the middle school. Um, I respectfully disagree that we should um, limit our children's rights <coughs> to occasions that occur outside of the school hours because that usually has the impact of, Im of affecting children who don't have the ability to participate in before or after school activities. That already is a problem for some children in our school district. Um, I think that the 
solution that Mr. Piazza and Mr. Giamatti have worked out for this current issue um, has the least impact on ours. I heard you say that when you spoke with council that there had been occasions in the past where events and situations like this happen. Um, I understand that this is perceived to be controversial issues and potentially political, although my understanding from my seventh grade son is that there was no discussion. Mr. Piazza did a very school safety related thing that was not that different from my understanding of what happens on the, um, what do they call the, the drills, the, the, the lockdown drills. So that already disrupts our children's school days and it is a direct response to what happened at Sandy Hook. So I think that this is, for me as a parent in the school district, not a problem. I wish we had more notice um, that it was going to happen at the middle school. I expected it to happen at the high school. I wasn't upset about it, but because of the snow day, I didn't know what was going to be done. I'm asking my son, he has no idea. Um, so, you know, and afterward finding out from him, um, I thought that it was handled well. Um, and I, there was one more thing and I can't remember what it is. Um, <laughs> With regard to, to those things, um, I, I wanted to say that there, there are other things that I have concern about. I, I think I wrote to Dr. Cronin once quite a long time ago when my seventh grader was very young I, at Monowis um, about the fact that uh, children are allowed to wear uniforms of organizations that are not part of the school district with which they belong. Um, in the schools that have political perspectives on things and so it is essentially their right to represent that. Um, and so I would say that if there is an effort to limit the rights of any children in the school district with regard to things like wearing a sticker to support LGBTQ students, that uniforms of organizations that are not part of the school district should also not be allowed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other people tonight? <coughs> My name is uh, Brian Quinn. I'm a resident in North Haven for 51 years. And I just want to pick it back on Amanda's comment that she made to Tina. You talked about the, the deficit being 300000 and that within the classrooms we're not going to limit any resources for, for students that need that. Mm -hmm. Having a special needs ch uh, child, while it's nice to hear about the, the turf and all the fun stuff that's going on with sports, the reality is we have an issue with special education in North Haven that needs to be addressed. I came tonight because I'm concerned not only for for the students and in, in, in the cut from last year to this year, but also we lost two teachers in, in the lower schools, special ed, that resigned. So I think that we, we have a, a little bit of a pattern or something going on other than what we might know as taxpayers in this town. So you said that services within the classroom will, are not affected mm -hmm. in that if if it does cut into the budget, that the resources will still be there for the child. Is that correct? We're doing the best okay. of that, absolutely. Amanda, because I remember you were pretty you were pretty passionate about making sure there wasn't, and I thought you relayed that pretty good to Tina and your response. It was good to hear that that mm -hmm. kids uh, within the classroom. Again, not talking about the fields. We're talking about kids that actually need help daily. Mm -hmm. um, I wish my son could go on uh, the field and, 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 and have a teacher help him out in the field. Um, to your comment, you talked about uh, teachers bringing up their additional pay from 90. Is, is that include paras? Does that include substitute teachers? What, can you just... That was ACES. Okay, so I ACES. sit on the governing body of ACES. Yeah, uh, uh, today's meeting was just to talk about the certified staff. Next month, they're going to be talking about the pairs and the non-certified non staff. Okay. And one question for um, Dr. Cronin is, is in the next budget next year, is there going to be a big cut in special education from this year to next year as there was from last year to this year? Is there a budget that's, in, that's going to be in place and is, is that, can that be shared before you uh, I'm not, what does that look like? When, when, does, when does the public get to see actually what dollars are spent in special education next year? 
I mean, because we're almost at the end of this year, right? Yeah. Um, the district's proposed budget is public. Okay. Um, so I, uh, if you don't have a copy of it, I certainly am happy to give no, you I, I, No, I, I, I'd like to see a copy. I just wanted to see if there's a... I know that we lost a lot of teachers in the middle school last year from this year, right? No. no. In no. fact, we added at the middle school um, last year because uh, for this school year because of increased student population coming up. It was a large fifth grade group going into sixth. So, so in the middle school you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we are uh, trying to maintain or when necessary add. Um, unfortunately, sometimes what it means is moving people from one, one place to another so that you, depending on where the need is. But Oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I maybe have misinformation, but that, that's all I really had. And you know, I think the board. I, my first time being here, and I, it's, it's nice to hear that so much. So many people are passionate about the town and in different aspects of the town. And I think North Haven is the way it is today because we have the people here today that care, mm -hmm. and it's nice to see. So Thank all you. your uh, your questions and all your responses are, are were well received by me, and uh, I'm a proud to be a North Haven resident tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get you a copy of that budget Thank before you. you leave so you can take a look at it. Uh, Nancy Barrett, uh, Crestview Drive. I just wanted to piggyback on, on the comment that was made about the budget. Um, Dr. Cronin, the presentation that you made at the, at the public hearing um, actually reflected the 4% increase mm -hmm. to the BOE budget. So mm -hmm. <coughs> the reality is probably going to be a 3% increase so what is online, if you wanted to look at the online budget, would not actually be accurate. Well, Mrs. Barrett, I was asked by the first selectman to uh -huh. present that budget. Oh, really? And, yes. Oh, okay. And um, I have had no conversation from either the first selectman or the Board of Finance about a reduction. Oh. I hear hearsay through the television, but I have had no direct communication about that. So. In my eyes, I'm working from 4.02. So the Board of Finance has met a couple of times and said that the Board of Education budget will, well, originally it was reduced down to 1.9% from 4%, and then it was bumped up to buy an extra $600,000 to get to 3%. So at what point, A, will you hear definitively what the Board of Ed budget should be in terms of a number that you're shooting right. for, and B, will the rest of us hear what that translates into in terms of services? Of course you will hear. No, no, I know. We'll when? Hear, when? <laughs> uh, we will hear after next Wednesday night's Board of Finance meeting. Okay. They set the budget at that point. I see. And then in May, I will, um, with Tina, we will bring forth to the Board if there are reductions, what we're recommending, uh, the reductions, and the board will decide if they agree with those or not. Okay. So, so not until May, and then we, we vote right. uh, at the but referendum. But you would have the information after. before the vote, certainly. Okay. So, so we'd have the, the details. Yeah. Okay. But I would never have presented a point uh, 4.02 budget. I was surprised, yeah. Right. It was kind I, of shocking. I would never have been dis, uh, deceitful. Like. Yeah, it, it wasn't deceitful. I, I just said, oh, well, this is what he presented the last time when it was actually said it, you know, yeah. your in initial request. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, let's see. Uh, one, uh, Two other quick questions. So, uh, Tina, just a quick question for you. Was there a significant spike in the February claims for the Board of Ed um, self-insurance claims for this current we just got the, the uh, February claims mm -hmm. um, no they're pretty so I didn't hear it at the last Board of Ed meeting so that's why I'm asking it just seems surprising to me because at the last Board of Finance meeting Mr. Frieda started the entire meeting by saying that due to a big spike in February claims on both the Board of Ed and the town side they have decided I'm not sure that they where need he was to getting that information. Right. But from what I've seen, right. we've been maintaining and there was no right. huge Well that spike. was the impression that I got at the last Board of Ed meeting, which would have been, you know, right, right after this. So it, it just seemed surprised to me because that was the whole reason for increasing the or the Board of Finance claiming that they should increase the Board of Ed budget by six hundred thousand dollars <throat> and the town side by a hundred thousand dollars. So that's what they approved at the end of the last Board of Finance meeting, and that's how we have the $100.4 million total budget. 
We were not so. part of that conversation with them at that mm -hmm. point, so I'm not sure how they reduced our, um, I think they were looking at the insurance line. I don't know how they came up with that number. So I can't, I can't answer the, you know, the seesaw effect, I guess, at this point. They went down and came back up. Right. So I'm not sure where that came from, but I do know that we've been meeting with <coughs> the insurance brokers and um, coming, you know, they're, they're coming to a better um, understanding of where the insurance should be mm -hmm. coming up um, in the next Board of Finance meeting. Okay. So there's no communication then between either Dr. Cronin or the rest of the Board of Education and the Board of Finance prior to the budget uh, being set next week. No, other than our presentation that we do um, right, at their right. workshop. Right, right. No, in terms of, the, you know, here's no. the number or what no. that, that should translate to. They, okay. they may ask for additional information right. from us and we'll send that to them, mm -hmm. but no, there's not. Okay. And is there any reason, Tina, that you think that the Board of Ed self-insurance should be more volatile than the town side? Uh, self insurance. We just, we just have more members. I mean, right. We have, so it's it's a it's, it's, it's a more, bigger number. It's a bigger number. We have more members. Um, so it's not a matter of one or two people. It's no. that the, it's a greater percentage. No. And it 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 really it could be anything. It could mm -hmm. be, you know, we have younger, you know, we have teachers that are younger and you know they're starting their families now. I mean, it could. There's a whole bunch of things that they look at. Right. In Tina, that we respect. Have, so our our um, I know I. I asked you about this right before the budget mm -hmm. presentation. We have 493 um, employees who mm -hmm. are taking insurance. Mm -hmm. 493. I don't know the town number. Mm. Um, they're they're definitely less than. Less. They don't have that many employees. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. No, no, of course, <coughs> no, right. not that that many employees. But I, I'm just wondering if there is some sort of an analysis that's going on to kind of double check whether this whole self-insurance decision mm -hmm. was a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any possibility for the Board of Ed to splinter off from the town just by the very nature of this population and the fact that you don't have a contingency fund mm -hmm. um, that maybe there should be an analysis done to, to kind of reevaluate this? Because it sounds like there was a savings of a million dollars last year and now we're a million dollars in the hole. Well, that doesn't sound like a great decision. Again, we only have one year under our belt, but perhaps it's worth setting up a, an analysis. Is, is, um, is that part of what Brown and Brown does yeah. for Remember us? Yeah, the discussions. We've had that discussion with mm -hmm. them. And our insurance, the program, we've always been part of the town. So when they decided to go self-funding, we were part of that we weren't bargaining part of the, pool. Right, part of <laughs> the bargaining point, <laughs> right. really. But we weren't, um, there was some discussion that was going on with us, but it was it came right down to the dollars and cents from the Board of Finance. But we as a board, when mm -hmm. it came about, I remember that we talked about it and said we would have to keep our eye on it for self-funding mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the population of the Board of Education versus the town and how right. much we were we would have to pay. Right. Would our charges go up because we, we do have a younger population, mm -hmm. more people in childbearing, and then we also have an older population. Right. Um, so your your financial liability is far right. greater right. than the town. Yeah. So, so th that's that why I'm saying it, doing. <coughs> it might be worth uh, sort of reevaluating. Um, okay, so thank you. There's just one more uh, point. Um, <coughs> I have a question. When there is a high school sports event, such as a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game, and there are entrance fees that are collected, where does the money go from those entrance fees as well as from the concessions? The um, <coughs> money from the entrance fees goes to um, an athletic director's account. So it goes back into the athletic program. Um, and the money from the concessions, the concessions are hosted each time by a different group or club from the high school. Mm. So that money that they raise is for their club. And we, we try to be very equitable about that. So um, there are so many that we have a three-year cycle almost in which, um, for home games, in mm -hmm. which people um, let us know if they're interested in being a part of it and then we assign them a time. So it doesn't go to the Tomahawk Club? No. Or to the you know, so Indians Booster Club? For example, if the music club, music group wanted to, 
and were on that three-year cycle or wanted to get in there, mm -hmm. they would do all the concession and raise the money, and they keep the money. But I, I, I want to qualify sure. something. I do think that um, the Tomahawk Club or the Indian Booster Club may run the concession stand one time. Oh, they're, they're one of the They're one cycle. of the people in the rotation, right, right, and right. they would make money there. I see. Yeah. Okay. And then that money that is collected <clears throat> that is not going directly into a school organization, but is instead going into the Tomahawk Club or the Indian Booster Club, the board has basically no regulation over how that money is used. No, no. not really. Like no. it could go all into football or all into any given sport that's as, my, that's as they my decide. Understanding. Okay. All right. That's very helpful. Thank you very much for your time. The only exception to gate fees. <laughs> <clears throat> is when there is a playoff game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the CIAC sends right. someone right. to man the gate, then the CIAC takes the money. Right. So those money. big games, when you get the big fan turnout, mm -hmm. all that money goes to CIAC. We don't see a penny of it. Okay. And th that's usually the postseason games. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment? This would be really quick. Um, first, um, I want to thank you guys for the decision to keep um, the phys ed classes off the field because um, that was a big concern before and I just it, it's really good that 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 um, policy that was talked about before the fields came in is um, staying in place um, then the other thing I just wanted to let the board know is that when I went to the Board of Selectmen uh, meeting last week I asked Mr. Frieda about the um, town's willingness to take over the maintenance of the fields, of the athletic fields, and take on the costs of maintaining those fields and the duties of maintaining those fields. And he told me, and this is the second time he said this in public, that he is willing to, to entertain that and to do that, um, but that he needs the board to ask him um, to take over those maintenance costs and to maintain those fields. Um, and for me, I think, there are a couple of benefits really to doing that from the board. A, it frees up your time from all of this discussion around the fields and everything else to focus more on education um, and not have to burden the staff from all of that's going on right now, which really a majority of it is about scheduling recreational programs on the field. So I think if I would really encourage the board to consider allowing the town to do that. The other thing is the town has the ability to make some deals with um, the youth rec um, groups that maybe the board doesn't have the ability to do. Um, I know when Max Sinaway used the Monoese fields, they raised all of the money for their scoreboards um, to have their fencing. They pay every year to do the fertilizing to those fields. So the town was able to work with that group in order to have the best recreational baseball fields they could have. So I just really want to encourage the board to ask Mike Frieda to take over the maintenance of these fields, especially because down the line, um, you know, it's going to be a big cost for replacement. And it would be so much easier for the town to budget for that than it will be for the board because you can't hold a contingency um, budget. And then the other thing I just want to have you guys be aware of currently the um, Max in Away Baseball, which is our recreational youth league, I've been told by the people who are the organizers, they no longer have access to Bailey Field or to the high school complex. And you guys might not know this, but the, the priority of the scheduling is going to um, two, uh, two for-profit um, baseball groups. One of them has some players in North Haven, but they're not all from North Haven. So that might be something you just want to look into because yeah. in our in the current policy right. it says those rec groups will get access after. first and um, and then after these other teams who are charging families for a lot of money for baseball um, get it after and then should be paying a fee. Mm -hmm. So um, Jenny, what were those two fields? You it's the Bailey Road field, field, yeah, and then the high school complex. So you're saying that the pay, the for-profit is getting preference over Max. town? Yes, Ma Max over Max in a way. Town. Yeah. And if you need connection with the people who are having an issue getting those fields, 
um, I can get you the names of who to talk to. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, and one last thing about the self-funding. There are other districts who did the self-funding. I know when mm -hmm. I first got on the board, I went to the CABE conference, and there were big issues with the self-funding of health insurance. So there may be other districts you can reach out to to figure out how they either made it work or what they ended up doing instead. Actually, Jenny, in one of my previous districts, we were self-funded. So I've had some experience with it and um, share what I know with <coughs> and, um, I do have to say that um, she is um, monitoring it. When, when she says daily, literally, she's <laughs> monitoring it daily. And um, because we want to be sure. But yeah. Anyone else for public comment? Hey, uh, Tim Gabriel, for Day Lane. Um, I want to thank you all for making me, um, allowing me to not talk about the turfs fields. <laughs> I think we're all a little bit tired of having those discussions. So, thank you for continuing your policy. Um, like a quick, like operational logistical question, I guess is like I've, I've been to the last couple of these meetings and it seems to be filling up where there's like less and less chairs. Um, Move this table. It, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, that that was actually a suggestion. Is I don't I don't know that we necessarily necessarily need to relocate as just kind of maybe change the layout of the room um, so that as as people are being more engaged, which I think is great. Um, everybody is kind of encouraged to stay. Public comment always comes at the end, so people are, wind up just kind of standing the entire time. Um, set up bleachers. And if that's about bleachers would be great. Yeah. <laughs> that's something to, uh, to consider. Um, and then I also did also want to voice my um, support for um, the board supporting uh, free speech. I think that is uh, an important thing. Um, I kind of do take, I think, a little bit of the opposite tone. And I'm, I'm Glad that you spoke up because I'm. I think everybody should be allowed to speak up um, from there and hear different perspectives. Um, I don't think that this stuff should be left out of the classroom. I think the classroom is the the perfect place for it. Um, I think that that's exactly where we should be kind of honing these critical thinking skills um, and getting students to really kind of engage with this world that goes on around them. Um, you know, the question about where does it end? Um, it doesn't end for the students the moment that they set foot in school. They're still thinking about this stuff. It's weighing on their mind, especially if they think somebody's going to be coming down the hallway with a gun. Um, so they're, it's top of mind for them. Um, and I think we need to allow a forum for them to discuss these things. Maybe that doesn't always come in the form of a protest, but um, if it is a controversial topic, I think there should be spaces within the schools um, for them to think about it. So if there is maybe something like a walkout or something going on, maybe there could be a forum to hear from anybody who has a thought about what's going on um, and why this walkout is happening or things like that. I think that would be good rather than bad to have in the schools. Um, the day of silence does not seem to me to be very controversial at all. Um, I think it's a great thing to support our community and the LGBT um, students. Um, from what I understand, that day arose as a result of, you know, kind of like back in the days where um, people were forced to be silent because they were in fear of um, either physical violence or um, reprisals from their families or their communities or something like that. So people pretty have much had no choice to be silent during those times. Um, and then that was actually sort of reversed during the time of the AIDS activists um, who used that to create the slogan, silence equals death, because by being silent, um, there was kind of like almost like a biological warfare that was being waged against the LGBT population. Um, I was one of the founders of the first gay straight alliance that was in my high school. Um, I had a, like a large number of friends who were LGBT in high school, and I would say probably like 30 to about 50% of them had attempted suicide at some point. Um, and others probably engaged in some other kind of self-harm. And that was not that long ago. So um, to say that this is an issue that's not affecting people, that doesn't take place during school hours, I think is a little bit of a stretch. Um, and I'm glad to see, uh, I think any time you can have like kind of the community supporting students um, to just have a voice, to just make a statement. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you, Tim. Okay, any others? <coughs> uh, Tom Rack, president of the North Haven Education Association. 
just a couple of quick things, and, and then there was something I actually came here to say. Um, but on, on the student involvement, um, and I apologize, Bob, for kind of back here going, no, no, that's the wrong date. Um, a, I teach it. We have to be just dealing with the Tinker case the last couple of days. <laughs> no, um, thank you. I was reading it today, and I, uh, I got that one in the 1943 Deer Call. Um, no, we don't, don't do that one. <laughs> okay, and you call yourself a social studies teacher. There's cases that my kids have to know. That's the 43 case, I don't believe is one of them. Uh, Rachel might know, she's in the class. Uh, so if you have any questions, she's the one you can okay. ask because she should be studying for that. Um, but the other thing is, I not only we're doing it right now, but I lived through it because I was in high school at the time. So uh, that just dated myself, but there you go. Um, and I do think it's, it's important for, for our students to have the opportunity to explore controversial topics. Um, it, I can't speak for the middle school as much because I didn't really teach, I've never taught there. I taught at the junior high, ninth grade, but not actually at the middle school. Um, but I know at the high school level, that's a very, very important opportunity for kids. And I have to commend um, both you, the board, and our administration for providing our students the opportunity to deal with a very, very important topic. And while I'm sure that there were students that were, that were out there specifically because they may have an anti-gun message, I, I can really say that most of the students were there simply to voice support uh, for the students that lost their lives, but also for the ones that are now living through that tragedy. Um, and I think all viewpoints you know, are valid, and uh, we try to talk about that in, in my class, but that's a senior civics and APUS government class, and students need to be talking about that and exploring those ideas and thinking about those things and coming to their own conclusions way before being seniors in high school. So uh, I applaud what was done. Um, and obviously it has to be done very carefully and all the things that you said are very, very important. Uh, but I do think we need to continue to allow our students to express themselves, to learn who they are and what they think, and to explore these topics. So whatever we can do to do that in an organized manner I think is a very positive thing. Um, I, I want to commend the board on what I consider to be a very honest um, and appropriate budget proposal that they made. Um, I think that Dr. Cronin and Tina did a very good job of presenting that to the Board of Finance. Uh, they had some concerns and questions, many of which were simply their lack of understanding of how education works, funding works, uh, unfunded mandates work. Mm -hmm and all of those pieces that you guys are much more aware of because you deal with them every day. Um, but I have to say I was extremely disappointed in the, the first selectman because he, a budget was presented and at the budget presentation, he said he was unhappy. And I got that. You know, <coughs> nobody wants to have to raise taxes on their uh, constituents or their citizens. So that's how I took that. You know, I, I wish I didn't have to do this. The state is in a mess. You know, we have to deal with what we have to. We have obligations. I'm unhappy that I have to present this budget. Um, but then in the paper, he was quoted as saying, I don't support the budget. I don't understand how you go publicly and present a budget that you know you don't support. I, I think that's not the way to do things. And I, as I said, I was very, very disappointed by that. Uh, to me, you present the budget that you support, you may then get comments on it, positive or negative, and then you may adjust that. But to come out and say you, did, don't, you didn't support the budget that you presented is, is very problematic. I hope he was misquoted, uh, but I haven't seen a correction anywhere. Um, so I'm not sure how you, how you go about doing that. Um, I also hope that he recognized and the Board of Finance recognized that most of the people who spoke on the budget, were supportive of the Board of Ed, Ed, Ed budget. They had questions on the town budget, and I'm not gonna get into whether those are valid or not, because I don't know that. I'm very familiar with, with the education budget. Um, I've been, obviously, at your meetings this year and in past years, so I understand <coughs> how and the hows and whys of that. 
I can't comment on, on the town budget, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but it did seem to me, from just sitting there and listening, that there was a lot of support for education and a lot of support for the budget. And so I hope that the Board of Finance is going to take that into consideration next week and understand that. Um, also, I hope they understand that when people see television and they see that meeting and they hear those positive statements of support for a Board of Ed budget, that they're probably disinclined to make phone calls. They're not going to call the first selectman and say, I don't like the budget, because they heard positive things. So I'm concerned that the phone calls he does get probably will be more negatively impacting the education budget. And I think he needs to understand that. Uh, so I have a lot of concerns about what's going to happen next week and how it's going to affect our students and the education system and you going forward in terms of any potential cuts you need to make. Um, so I hope, as I said, that all of that is taken under consideration by the Board of Finance next week and that they do what I believe to be the right thing, which is <coughs> provide an adequate budget for the students in North Haven. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we do not need to go into, there's no more public comment, right? Okay. Uh, we do not need to go into executive session tonight. Um, were there any future agenda items we wanted to put on outside of what we talked about? Okay. Then may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All in we can, favor? We can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> motion passed. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.